Hello everyone, I am Dr. E. Purshottam, Associate Professor of Physics, Department of Physics. So today, I am going to discuss about relativistic mechanics. So in this introduction, what is relativity, what is relative position, what is relative size, what is relative time, what is relative motion. We are going to discuss this introduction in this class. So, what is relativity? So, in this relativistic mechanics, what is relativity in the introduction? You can see on this PPT, relativity. Relativity is a fundamental theory in physics that describes how the physical phenomena including the nature of light, space, time and gravity depend on the relative motion between observer and observed objects. We can see here, so in this introduction we can see what I am saying here. So it includes the nature of light, space, time and gravity. So depending on these four one is the nature of light, space, time and gravity. The relativistic mechanics that is relative motion between observers and observer time we can be observed. What is relative position? So we can see here the relative position refers to the location. What I am saying? The relative position represents that a particular location or direction of an object or point in a space in relation to the particular observer or particular reference point. It is not an absolute position, but it is determined by the observers. So, we can see at a particular point of view, we can observe the relative position. So, take an example. Imagine two people, we can see here one is girl, this is one is girl and another one is, he is the boy, so this is the tree, we can see here. So imagine two people, one is girl and boy are standing in a large field. So there is, an, there is a tree, we can see here clearly in the field and they want to describe their position. So related to, relative to the two people, one is girl and another one is boy. From the girl side, she is, said, she is telling, she might say the tree is to my left. So we can see here, she is telling the tree is at left and the boy is telling it is right side. Who is telling lie? Both are telling same because of this is the relative position. Relative position. We can observe here the girl and boy because it depends on their individual point of view or where they are standing in the field. It illustrates the concept of relative position. So both are telling same. So the girl telling the tree is at my left side and the boy is also telling the tree is at my right side. It represents that the relative position. So relative position refers to the location, direction of an object or a particular point in space. In space means in three dimensional direction in relative to a particular observer. So what is <coughs> relativistic mechanics in that what is relative size? We can see clearly here different different sizes. We can see relative size refers to the actual size of an object. What is the definition? So relative size refers to the actual size of an object. So when compared to another object, comparing one object to another object, we can uh, told about that uh, related size with the small, big and comparing uh, comparison. For example, I am taking an example, if we compare football with an atom, which is bigger, then 
it is extremely big that is the football so and if compared football with earth it is extremely small so you can see here this is the cricket ball this is the football this is an earth so compared to this ball cricket ball this football is big compared to this football compared to this football earth is very big so comparing this ball and earth we can say that relativistic related relative size so thus we can say that the size is relative so next one we can see <coughs> relative time and relative motion what is relative time so generally we will ask what is the time now so the answer depends upon the location because the time now in india different from the time in america so in different different places we can observe different different time also there is no paradox here because we cannot answer the question without referring the place thus time is relative so next one relative motion the motion or speed of an object can be different when observed from the different or uh, frame of references we can observe here we can see for example imagine here a train you can see this is the train right the train is moving along a track at a constant speed so you can see here 60 kilometers per hour he is the observer at a stationary so the first observer is a standing i am taking he is the first observer the first observer is a standing still on the earth the observer see the train moving at 60 kilometers per hour relative to he or she position there is no change in the train speed so the observer ob observing the actual motion of the train so you can see the second observer in the car we can observe here the second observer is inside a car that is also moving in the same direction we can see in this figure same direction as the train at 20 kilometers per hour to the observer the train appears to be moving at 40 kilometers to their moving car because so in the same direction we can take 60 minus 20 we get to 40 kilometers per hour we can observe so the the car is moving along the same direction with the train the observer is observing just the train is moving with 40 kilometers per hour so another one here the third person or third observer is in another car but it is traveling in the opposite direction we can see this is the opposite direction with the 30 kilometers per hour from this observers the train seems to be moving at 90 kilometers so the train is moving with 60 kilometers per hour and the third observer moving with 30 kilometers per hour with opposite direction so we can take this is 60 plus 30 90 kilometers per hour he is moving thus the velocity of the train is different for different observers thus the motion is relative we can say that the motion is relative okay these are the <coughs> introduction in our today's lecture so we have studied about relativity relative position relative size relative time relative motion now we are going to discuss about our actual topic 
frames of references what is frames of reference you can see the definition here clearly we can see here okay now <clears throat> the frames of reference what is the definition of frames of reference we can see this is the definition a coordinate system which is representing the position of a particle in space what is the space three dimensional we can see here along x y and z so this three dimensional along a line that is called one dimensional along x direction and y direction it is called two dimensional so this is along x y this is z so this is the space that is called three dimensional a coordinate system which is representing the position of a particle in space or a three dimensional system that is called frames of reference the simplest frames of reference is the cartesian coordinate system in which the position of the particle is specified by its three coordinates x y z along three perpendicular axes so in this system the position of a point is described by the coordinates x y z we can see here so this is a particular point to p x y and z or you can see here the coordinate system x y z and at any instant of time t we can t x y z and t so for the complete information of any event we required its position and the time so in this way we required four coordinates that is x y z and t to describe the event to describe the event so for the complete information of any event we required its position and the time of occurrence in a frame of reference in a frame of reference so in this way again i am telling we required four coordinates x y z and t to describe the event the reference frame employed for this purpose is known as space time frame of reference so i shown in this figure clearly we can see so in this figure we can see here that is the space time frame of reference x y z with the time respect to time that is the cartesian system so types of frames of references these are two types one is inertial frame of references and another one second one is non inertial frame of references so inertial frame of reference and non inertial frame of references first one what is inertial frame of reference what is the definition a frame of reference that obeys newton's law of inertia we know newton's three laws are there newton's first law second law and third law a frame of reference that obeys newton's laws of inertia and other principle of newton newtonian mechanics is called inertial frame of reference so again what i am saying a frame of reference that obeys newton laws of inertia and other principles of newtonian mechanics is called inertial frame of reference so explanation we can see in this form of reference newton laws are valid so the newton laws are obeys here they are non accelerated frames non accelerated frames are constant velocity non accelerated means the acceleration is equal to zero so acceleration the rate of change of velocity that is equal to zero so d by dt of constant 
is equal to 0. So, comparing here, what about v? Therefore, velocity v is equal to constant. v is equal to <coughs> constant. So, what I am saying here clearly, in these frames of references, Newton's laws are valid. They are non-accelerated frames. Non-accelerated frames means the acceleration is 0. What about force? F is equal to ma. A is 0. M into 0, that is a 0. The force acting on the body is equal to 0. Simply, we can say that such a constant velocity, we can see here acceleration is equal to 0. The dv by dt is equal to 0. V is equal to constant v is equal to constant. Such a constant velocity frame of reference is called inertial frame of reference. So, in this frame a body not acted upon by an external force, there is no force acting on the body. So, the force is equal to 0, it remains in its state of rest or uniform motion. So, it remains in its state of rest or uniform motion is known as Newton's first law. Newton's first law. So, what are the examples? The observer at rest on the earth. Second one, a lift moving up, down with constant velocity. We can see here clearly. Yes, we can see here a frame of reference that obeys the Newton laws of inertia. So, example explanation in this frame of reference, Newton's laws are valid. They are non accelerated frames or constant velocity frames. Non accelerated means so the acceleration of the body is equal to 0. Therefore, the rate of change of velocity is equal to 0. Therefore, velocity is equal to constant. Such a constant velocity, the body velocity is constant, such a constant velocity frame of reference is called inertial frame of reference or non-accelerated frames of references also. So, example, observer at rest on the earth. Second one, a lift moving up, down, with a constant velocity, with a constant velocity. What is inertial frames of reference? So, a frame of reference that obeys the Newton laws of inertia is called inertial frame of reference. So, non-inertial frame of references. So, first one, <coughs> what I am saying here, <coughs> the first one you can see here, Inertial frame of references or non-accelerated, the acceleration is 0, this is called non-accelerated, non-accelerated frames of references. So, here non-inertial frame of reference, you can see the definition clearly. A frame of reference which is in an accelerated motion with respect to an inertial frame of reference is called non-inertial frame of reference. You can see the definition. A frame of reference which is in an accelerated motion with respect to an inertial frame of reference is called non-inertial frame of reference. So, examples you can take here. A train, if a train starts moving forward, a ball placed on the train on the floor will roll backward even though no one pushes it. Imagine. So, second one, if you put a coin on a spinning plate, it will move towards the edge on its own even though you did not push it. So, distinguish between inertial frame of references and non-inertial frame of references. So, left side inertial frame of references, right side non-inertial frame of references. So, this is the definition here also definition. 
a frame of reference that obeys the Newton laws of inertia is called inertial frame of reference. A frame of reference which is in an accelerated motion with respect to an inertial frame of reference is called non-inertial frame of reference. So, according to this definition, second point, it obeys the Newton's laws of motion. So, it does not obeys the Newton's laws of motion. Here, in inertial frame of reference, there is no external force acting on the body. So, force is equal to 0. In non-inertial frame of reference, F is not equal to 0. So, some force is acting on the body. We can observe here. So, here the velocity is constant in inertial frame of reference, but in non-inertial frame of reference, the velocity changes. In inertial frame of references, the acceleration of the body is zero. So, non-inertial frame of references, it has some acceleration. So, already discussed example number one the observer at rest on the earth. Here also we can take here examples. If a train starts moving forward, a ball placed on the train floor will roll backward even though no one pushes it. So, this is a second example, a lift moving up and down with constant velocity. So, second one, in second example non-inertial frame of references, if you put a coin on a spinning plate, it will move towards the edge of its own plate. So, even though you did not push it. So, in these frames of references, we studied about the definition of the frames of references. What is the definition of frames of references? A system of coordinate axis which defines the position of a particle in two or three dimensional space is called a frame of references. And we studied the types of references. The types of references, these are the two types inertial frame of reference or these are also called unaccelerated frames of references. Second one non-linear, non-inertial frames of references or it is also called accelerated frames of references. So, inertial frame of references, it is also called, what is that? It is also called unaccelerated frames of references. So, here non-inertial frame of reference is also called accelerated frames of references. So, these are the differences between uh, inertial frame of references and non-inertial frame of references. Okay, we completed distinguish between inertial and non-inertial frames of references. So, our next topic the theory of relativity. So, what is theory of relativity? We can observe on the PPT. The theory which deals with the relativity of motion and rest is called the theory of relativity. So, the theory which deals with the relativity of motion and at rest compared to the observer, it is called the theory of relativity. So, the theory of relativity is classified into two types. Number one, special theory of relativity and general theory of relativity. So, you can see here, <coughs> first of all, first one, special theory of relativity. So, the special theory of relativity deals with objects and systems which are either moving at a constant speed with respect to one another or at rest. So, what I am saying, the special theory of relativity deals with objects and systems which are either moving at a constant speed with respect to one another or at rest. So, what are the postulates of special theory of relativity? The special theory of relativity was introduced by Einstein in 1905. 
So the special theory of relativity is based on the following two postulates. Number one is principle of relativity. Number two, you can see the principle of constancy of speed of light. So first one, the principle of relativity. So postulates of special theory of relativity, two types. Number one, the principle of relativity. Number two, the principle of constants of speed of light. So I am going to discuss principle of relativity. In principle of relativity, all the physical laws are same in all the inertial frames of references which are moving with constant velocity relative to each other. So all the physical laws, that is Newtonian laws, all the physical laws are same in all the inertial frames of references that is called uh, principle of relativity. It is moving with uh, constant velocity relative to each other. The postulate implies that, <coughs> so this postulate implies that there is no absolute state of rest or absolute motion. It represents Newton's first law. So this postulate implies that there is no absolute state of rest or absolute motion. Thus, Einstein's principle of relativity establishes the complete quality of all inertial frames and resides the Newton's ideas of absolute space and absolute motion. So, according to principle of relativity, the Newton's idea was rejected. So, what I am saying, the principle of relativity, all the physical laws are same in all the inertial frames of reference, which are moving with the constant velocity relative to each other. So, the postulate implies that there is no absolute state of rest or absolute motion. Thus, Einstein principle of relativity establishes the complete equality of all inertial frames and rejects the Newton's idea of absolute space and motion. So, second one, the principle of constancy of speed of light. So, you can see the speed of light in vacuum is the same in every, every inertial frame or simple, the simple, the principle of constancy of speed of light, very simple, the speed of light in free space is constant. The speed of light in space or the speed of light 3 into 10 to the 4, 8 meter per second. So, that speed in free space is constant. So, the principle of constancy of speed of light. The speed of light in a vacuum is the same in every inertial frame. So, another definition, the speed of light in free space is constant. According to this postulate, the speed of light is the same for all observers in all directions, in all directions. So, we can see here according to the according to this postulate the speed of light is the same for all the observers in the all the directions or whether the velocity of light is measured relatively to the medium in which it travels or relatively to moving observer. So, another one is general theory of relativity. So, the theory of relativity already we discussed the theory which deals with the relativity of motion and rest is called theory of relativity. It is divided into two types number one special theory of relativity just we have completed. So, I am going to discuss that second one general theory of relativity. What is the general theory of relativity? So, it deals the general theory of relativity deals objects or systems which are speeding up or slowing down with respect to one another that is the general theory of relativity. So, the general theory of relativity explains the equivalence principle, equivalence principle. What is the equivalence principle? The fundamental postulates of the general theory or relative is the equivalence principle which states that there is no locally distinguishable difference between the 
effects of gravity and the effects of acceleration. So, what is the equivalence principle? Simply, there is no locally distinguishable difference. There is no locally distinguishable difference between the effects of gravity and the effects of acceleration. We can explain using one example also. So, the equivalence principle you can see on the PPT. The fundamental postulate of general theory of relativity you can observe here. So, simply you can see here the equivalence principle. So, this is the equivalence principle. The fundamental postulate of general theory of relativity is the equivalence principle which states that. So, the definition is simply you can see this is the definition there is no locally distinguishable difference between the effects of gravity and the effects of acceleration. Acceleration we can see an example. So, we can see here an example an observer inside the sealed accelerated room would not be able to tell whether they are experiencing a gravitational force and acceleration. What I am saying an observer inside a sealed accelerated room would not be able to tell whether they are experiencing a gravitational force and acceleration. These postulates were ground breaking the reshaping of our understanding of the fundamental principles of physics. So, according to this fundamental uh, related principles of physics, we will go to discuss about Galileo's principle. In our next class, we will discuss about Galileo's principle or it is also called Newtonian principles of relativity. So, thank you so much. Thank you one and all. Thank you.